Fellas of Heart Life 2010, here with my man Danny Bird. Just a big respect for you, Jimmy. Absolutely wicked set you yeah. put down there. Loved all that, the old schools coming in back in there, like hip hop and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Loving all that. Let's take him back because he was just, just talking then, and he's like, you, people won't realise that you go back to like 98, that's your oh. first release. Oh, yeah, no, I'm alive. I'm, I've been doing this for a while, like I was saying to you earlier, like, that I wasn't very prolific back then. Yeah, yeah, so you're lucky to get like one Danny Bird release a year back then. <laughs> right up till recently, and then I finally like thought, yeah, I actually need to make some money in music if I'm going to carry on. What was so. the kickstart? What was the catalyst? Honestly, it was, it was moving, moving out of home. Like, I lived with my right. parents for a long time. It's weird, but it's like, you know, like, your old man just giving you, like, giving you a hard time every day, turn it down, turn it down. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't until I moved out because I didn't go to university or anything, so right, yeah, yeah. I didn't move out until I was like 24. And then just like moving into your own place and stuff just really kick started. So maybe inspiration was quite weird, but uh, you know, so the honest that, answer for that, that was what year was that? Like 2004, something like that. So yeah. it's like, it's like, the, um, it's like the latest, it's like the latest jungle, but at the same time, it's still very much a drum bass, it's like very. Yeah. Raw at that stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what would you choose that was out that in that time where you bought yourself this and I can be like keep these guys. When was this one? 2004. Um well I'd already when I signed my hospital that was like the, the beginning of 2000 and that, right, right. that was when the whole like liquid funk scene was kicking off. Right, got And like I was on, you know, me, Carly with addiction, high contrast, the whole hospital thing, that's when it really kicked off. So Things were really going well for me then, and I got that writer's block. And it, when I came back in 2004, it wasn't really like I was competing. It was like I had to start all over again, completely over again. So I wasn't even really competing with anybody. I was just happy to get a record out, you know. And just so was, it was anybody that you was listening to at that time and thinking to yourself, yeah, that's a really bad thing to you know? I mean, yeah. Um, well, there's so many different people. Like the hospital crew are a big inspiration. You, know? like, you, you could get all your inspiration just from those artists, but like, I'm from Bath, which is near Bristol, and the whole full cycle thing is like quite a big influence as well. Yeah, yeah, maybe not, not maybe not in the music, but I don't know why, I just, I just love that kind of style and the beats, the roll of beats and stuff, so. Some, um, I bought some old synths for this, this new one. Yeah, it's one called an Alpha Juno 2, right? Has yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. you know the Prodigy Charlie yeah, yeah, and that yeah, Mentalism yeah. noise got yeah. that. So uh, yeah, that that was like that was like 400 quid just for that noise. But it's, it's the original. Worth it. <laughs> and the the, the 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 sub you get out of that as well. Like right. you, you can't really use a sample for that. You have to use the the official kind of yeah, so clean. Um, so that's probably one of my favourite. And then. Uh, another thing I bought, I'm buying loads of like early 90s kit now. And uh, another module I bought was this uh, roller module for like 60 pounds. But it's got prodigy string sounds in it, like out of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, you know, and it, because everybody's using software now, you can pick up this stuff so cheap. The 60 quid for, you know, for those yeah, strings yeah. Well, well worth it. So, uh, but yeah, I'm mainly a, like a software man, really, like anybody else. Logic. Yeah, you use Logic, Mac, yeah. yeah, Logic 9 on a Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Various plugins. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, everybody's kind of, uh, everybody's small the software now, you know. So, well, we've had this conversation with quite a few people, and is it, you find the software now is more accessible to anybody to write to. Do you, oh, you, do you yeah. like that? Do you, do you, uh, how do you feel about it? Well, it can only be a good thing for the music because it's like it brings people through faster and yeah, it makes yeah. people step in the game. But when, like, not to sound like a sourpuss or like old, but when I was starting out, you needed to be really dedicated to do it. Like, you needed a two grand sampler, you know, like you yeah, had to yeah, pay an Akka, yeah, 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 an Atari ST. And it was like you were dedicated. You, you know, you're 16, 17 years old. I remember my dad like said, yeah, no. I'll get the finance for it, you pay for every month for your job. That was dedication. Yeah, yeah. As right, now, right. you can just go and get your copy of Reason, Cracked, <laughs> do it, and, and do it straight away. But, you know, um, and, you know, the influx of demos I get now, there's so many more people doing it. You, I, I'll get... Is the quality, is the quality better? No, 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 it's a well, lot worse. It's a lot worse, because the more people are doing it. But, you know, through that, good music still comes out, and new artists emerge, so... 
It's just the you know, good and bad moments. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, it's just um, I think it's good in the whole world. You know, you can make, you can work on tunes on your laptop. When you, you know, like when you go away, you can carry on playing. On a coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done lots of stuff like that. It's, 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 it's brilliant, really. You know. Where we are now, present moment now, what could what what we what's we're touring? Are you touring hard? Um, are you in the studio working hard? I've been in the studio for the last ten months working on this album. It's literally just finished. It'll be finished in three weeks. What year was Super Tide from? 2008. Right, right. So yeah, um, that's coming in September. So yeah, I've just been living and breathing in the studio. Have like, you been on the remix too? Because a lot of the artists that we've been interviewing uh, yeah. recently, there's been a lot of people. Well, I, I cut them all out. I cut out a lot of my gigs and I cut out the remixes just to concentrate on Your doing material. this. Yeah, some, sometimes, and it was weird because um, when Sweet Harmony come out at the beginning of the year, that was a, that, that, that blew right, up. Right. Yeah. And, you get loads of DJ inquiries, but I have to say no because you have to. You have limit to, yourself. You have to, yeah, limit yourself and, you know, like DJing and production, they don't go hand in hand sometimes. You need to just. So, like, it was quite frustrating to turn down all that work, but you've got to take a few steps forward, back to go forward. You know? Music in general, I've done a It seems like uh, jungle is very much back in these days. Yeah. You've got a, a lot more Abram Luke. I love all yeah, that yeah. shit, so bring it on. Yeah. Um, do you find that it became stagnant? That's why it had to go back to where it is. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's probably still not enough people doing the jungle stuff, you know. I mean, a lot of the new, a lot of the new crowds, the young crowds, like drum and bass crowds, are very getting, getting younger. I think, and yeah, yeah. some of them don't get the jungle stuff. You know, you play like a sort of a normal two-step, you know, like pumping, kind of like standard drum beats and they're, and they're raving and you play a jungle and they're like, sometimes it goes off, sometimes they're like, yeah. yeah. A bit too complex the beats for them. Yeah, you know, and it's like, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's nice to have but a shock few... Out, the shock out when that came out, that came to a critical acclaim. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. Everybody got that straight away. Yeah, no, I, that, that, was, that was the funny thing, but... I, I guess it's because they it's from that era and they know it and it's yeah, on Oscar. Well, so, so, you know, uh, but yeah, I find definitely with the crowds nowadays in drum bass, it's not so much about dub play culture, it's more about tunes they know. It's quite weird. Like, yeah, yeah. back in the day, you'd go to the full cycle tonight in the back of the coat in Bristol and you'd go there to hear dub play. You'd hear just plates and plates and stuff you'd never heard before. And now, like, you know, unless it's got a really kind of like big build of an obvious thing. It doesn't quite go off. They, people like to know tunes yeah, yeah, that they yeah. know. So as a DJ, it's kind of like you have to mix a little bit of the classics with the news. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting times. Yeah, hence your eclectic set that you played just now as well. Yeah, yeah, I try. Like, mixed it up. Yeah. How are you feeling with the dubstep? Where do you stand with that? Do you like, do you like it? I don't really, it's not really my thing and it never has been, but um, it's like, it's a whole new genre. It's every, every generation has their kind of music. And, uh, you know, it's almost, it's crazy that like, Dubstep kids, their parents grew up on drum and bass. And now they're doing dubstep. It's weird. It makes me feel old. So um, I, I, I like some of it, and I like it. It's opened up um, a lot of doors. There's a lot of amateur sound and stuff out there. And I think um, a bit saturated. Do you think? Of course, but everybody wants to do it. You know, so it, there's something very attractive about dance music when it's a very do-it-yourself effort. You know, it's like I got into music because I heard rave. Right, yeah, right, yeah, and I thought, I thought, I like that. But I could do that myself. Yeah, yeah. Ten years later, it took me to learn like all that <laughs> stuff. You think, you know, you think, yeah, no, I can have a go at that, and that's a powerful thing. You know, but the best thing about it as well is that you can remix all these classics. That people <laughs> think that they've heard. Yeah. Yeah, and then you bring them out and it's just so fresh and I was like, wow. Yeah. I think the rave stuff's coming back though, I think like all those big riffs and stuff, like that's where I'm that's where I'm headed. Yeah, I'm like it now. Let's take it to the future now where are you there black? And it's the UK tours, we're going to see European tours, world tours, and yeah, like that. Well, I'm quite busy in June, did gigging every year, uh, got about four Festival gigs. Festival season started. Yeah, big chill, I was doing Glades, uh, doing another one called Kendall Rising, this obviously. Uh, then yeah, just looking towards the album, coming out, probably be a UK tour. 
I mean, that's another thing about drone base now. You can, su you can survive just off the tour in the UK. Yeah, true. It's true. brilliant. It's brilliant yeah. in a way because you get to stay in your own bed every night, you know. <laughs> and like, Europe's kind of died off, but the UK is just strong. So. Do you think the dubstep vibe has brought that, the drum and bass vibe back in, do you think? Because a lot of, like, because a lot of um, DJs now have noticed that they're playing a lot of eclectic sets, so you keep even like, even, like screaming and playing like drum and bass. And, yeah, it's very, it's very like multi genre. Like, like tonight or well, today, I like playing a little bit of hip hop and set. Sometimes I play some old school garage. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just big. like, yeah, that's what the clients want to hear. They don't want to hear, you know, you've got to be quite entertaining and switch it up. It's like, crowds now, they're in the MTV generation. They, you know, they want, they want something happening. <laughs> they want me to put a cape on and fly. Fly <laughs> <laughs> onto the deck. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Pyrotechnics. <laughs> uh, so I wish you all the best. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Electro, electro, electro.